let's dive into what might be the most expensive laptop I've ever tested on this channel. 2025 MSI Titan 18, HX AI edition. And listen, I don't throw this out lightly, but this machine, it absolutely shocked me. If you're a creative professional working with RED 6K or even 8K B raw footage in Premiere Pro, or you just want a desktop tier monster that actually runs cool and quiet, this laptop might just be the one you've been waiting for. Let's talk about genuinely what I love. The fastest 6K RED footage export I've ever seen on my channel. A matte mini LED display, bright, color accurate, no reflection. Two Thunderbolt 5 ports come on this device. An SD card slot, check. Four M.2 slots with one that's Gen 5 plus its own dedicated heat pipe. Great thermals most of the time. We'll caveat there, we'll get into that later in the video. And then of course, it's that excellent port selection. Now this thing is a creator's dream, but let's talk about what I don't love. MSI went haptic on this trackpad, and the haptic engine, I, I just don't like it. It looks great, but it often makes a lot of mistakes. Gestures, especially two finger scrolling or dragging. I traded in, in a second, for a manual click trackpad. Fan behavior, while mostly good, it's inconsistent. Some tasks, different noise levels, it's kind of all over the place. We'll talk more about that later as well. Okay, let's get into the full video. Let's start with the overall form factor because this thing looks like a spaceship. I mean, look at the bottom cover of this device. It is, it is next level. I love the design of it. They've done all kinds of neat designs on the bottom to make the cooling system work really well in tandem with the bottom cover design. They didn't just stick an old bottom cover on here. They worked together all of the cooling essentials and the way that the bottom cover is designed to pull air in, push air out, and it's really seen inside of the benchmarks later in the video. And look at the thermals and the fan noise. They did a great job designing it and, it, and it just looks absolutely awesome. Now, on top of that, you get the top of the laptop here. You have this nice silver accent. This is plastic. So we have an aluminum top cover, an aluminum insert here, but then plastic on the rest of the design. Now we talked about the ports a little bit, my love and don't love, but let's dive in. We have a nano lock, two USB type A's, an SD card reader. Flip over the device for two Thunderbolt 5 ports, an additional USB type A, and a headphone jack. And along the back side, network port, HDMI, and your power adapter. Does it have the perfect ports? I think it pretty much does. Now, as we're looking at the outside of the device, I talked a little bit about the design of the chassis, but I didn't showcase the back panel. As you can see, really nice ventilation here along the back panel, and even the side, nice large vents. So not only does the bottom cover have really nice design for the ventilation, but the overall design on the outside is great. Now, it does have some of those gamer vibes. Um, so I've talked a little bit about that in other videos. If you're looking for a more discreet device, this might not be your choice, but I think overall, for me being a creator who actually thinks gamer designs are pretty neat, I do like the overall look of it. I think it's awesome. Another thing that really stands out to me about this device is the speaker placement. We have subwoofers that also have speaker grills heading outward on each side. So the sound really allows it to flow out. And we go ahead and we give you a sneak peek to the interior of the laptop while we're talking about the speakers. And you can see we have upward facing speakers here as well. These are going to be more of your tweeters and mids. And the audio experience, I'm quite impressed with on this device. Here's an audio sample so you can hear for yourself. You're getting a sneak peek into my brand new office and even into my latest video about why I've replaced my entire desktop system with a laptop. I filmed a full video transitioning from my old studio to my new studio and this is so much more optimized. So I definitely don't want you to miss that video. I'll link it up at the end of this video and a huge shout out to Intel for sponsoring this entire series. I would not have been able to make this transition without them. They've been a huge support in helping me connect with the right gear to make this transition possible. Uh, bringing over the MSI Titan for me to check out and utilize as well as talking about the different options that were available like the HP Omen or the Asus Republic of Gamer Strix Scar or the Lenovo Legion Pro 7i. And I ended up settling on the MSI Titan 18. And in the unboxing of this laptop, I had a number of questions regarding my choice of this specific laptop. As I mentioned, I narrowed my search down to the Omen 
or the Strix Scar or the Legion Pro 7i, but I ended up here with the MSI Titan and that is due to my non-negotiables. I absolutely wanted to have Thunderbolt 5 ports on my device. Now the next thing was a 4K matte display. I love matte displays, and if I was gonna be using this as my main workstation, it had to be a matte display. Not only is it matte, but again, it's 4K mini LED, so it's super bright, and it has a built-in battery because it's a laptop. So if I go on the go with this, I can bump the brightness down to like 15, 20%, and it's still at 150 or 200 nits of screen brightness because the max brightness I've been able to test is around 750 nits of screen brightness. So it made it for the probably the most efficient laptop I could get my hands on since I may take this on the go quite a bit. The third thing was I wanted four M.2 slots inside of my system. Now this was crucial as well because I like to have one drive for my OS, one drive for my storage, and then one drive for caching Premiere Pro. And this was absolutely essential to me. So that left me with the MSI Titan 18 because the Omen doesn't have Thunderbolt 5 and then the Strix Scar, the Legion Pro 7i only have the two M.2 slots. So if you're wondering why these are my non-negotiables and why I was crazy to make the jump from a full desktop tower to a laptop, and if you're considering between the two for your full workstation, you should definitely check out that video. It was so much fun to make and I really think you're gonna get a ton of value out of it. And while we are, uh, have the device open, while we're giving a sneak peek, there is a webcam on the top bezel. It has a manual cover to cover the webcam so you know that it's all covered and no cyber spying. And here's a sample of that webcam so you can see and hear for yourself. This is the webcam on the MSI Titan 18 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. Now this is a 4K mini LED panel running at 3840 by 2400 resolution with a 120 hertz refresh rate. And at the moment I powered this device on for the first time, I literally said out loud, wow. It is so bright. It's a 744 nits of screen brightness per my test. Matte finish, so no none of that annoying glossy reflectiveness. 100% DCI-P3 color accuracy, and it doesn't just look good, it performs really well. And this is the best display I've used on a laptop in 2025, hands down. It's big, bright, color accurate, and it's matte. I absolutely love it. All right, while we have the device open, I'm gonna talk about the keyboard and the trackpad. But first, let's show the open and close test as well as a little screen wobble. So opens and closes easily with one hand. Of course, it is a heavy device. Um, but then the screen wobble is something to definitely take a look at. And you can see it stops fairly quickly. It has a very firm hinge, but it does have a bit of bounce. Now, as far as the screen flex is concerned, it is an 18 inch panel. So you're gonna have some screen flex along the bottom and along the top. So just keep that in mind. Okay, now let's go ahead and talk about the keyboard. This is a Cherry MX keyboard. It has that snappy, like, ping. I don't know if you've ever used a gaming keyboard, but those metal switches have a really cool, like, ping sound to them. But it's unique, it's special. And for somebody who is in a quiet office setting, this would not be necessarily the keyboard if you have neighbors who don't like loud noises. Uh, it is definitely one of the more loud keyboards. I myself am in my office alone. I love mechanical keyboards. I like how loud they are. I like the feel of them, the long press. And so this is a perfect keyboard for me. However, the one thing that I really don't like about it, talked about in the unboxing, is the shift key. That small shift key drives me nuts. I wish they would have moved these arrow keys down to give me a full size shift key, but I did not design this computer, unfortunately, so I'm stuck with this shift key. Overall, really like the keyboard, good spacing around the keys, easy, very user-friendly, it's great. The trackpad, it's not good. Um, it's It gets confused, it makes clicks when I don't want it to click. When I go to drag uh, and do like two finger scrolls, sometimes it clicks and then moves in an object. So like if I'm scrolling through like a folder, see right there. The haptic engine needs some help. I mean, there, I didn't even try to set that up. As an example, I have some files pulled up here inside of a finder, and I'm gonna just try and click and drag. See, I didn't let go with my touch. I kept the click, and it like let go of my... Like, they're very sensitive. Like, if you don't click and hold really tight, 
it like lets go. There you go, it let go. I didn't ask for it to let go. I have not had this issue with other MSI devices in the past, but this specific device is definitely showing that the haptic engine is not at its prime. Okay, here's the real kicker for this device. The upgrade opportunity, four M.2 slots, including one Gen 5 slot with its own dedicated heat pipe. You also get two RAM slots, user upgradable to 128 gigs. I kind of wish that there were four just for fun, but still that it has two is very solid. Now this laptop is a beast. It packs a 24 core, 24 thread Intel Core Ultra 9 285HX paired with an NVIDIA RTX 5090 at 24 gigs of VRAM with a maximum graphics power of 175 watts. 6K red footage, a nine minute clip placed into Premiere Pro, exported out at full quality settings, five minutes, the fastest time, well over the fastest time I've ever exported. 6K B-RAW, nine minute clip, exported at eight minutes and 49 seconds. 6K playback, of course, is zero drop frames out of the 16,177 in the project. And then 8K B-RAW footage, only 21 drop frames at full quality. Insanely fast device. It, I'm just, I'm shocked. Now it's not just video editing. For Photoshop AI Denoise, 2.7 seconds. And then in Lightroom, 4.73 seconds. So super fast. The DaVinci Resolve 4K export, one minute and 20 seconds. This is the fastest mobile system I've ever tested. Now performance is one thing, but how does it sound? How does it cool? Honestly, pretty darn good. In most use cases, fan noise stays around 40 to 45 decibels, which is super comfortable. Now when exporting 6K or 8K footage on extreme mode, the fans do ramp up to 58 to 61 decibels. That's expected. Temperatures hovered around 66 to 82 degrees Celsius during 4K exports, and then reached 98 to 101 degrees Celsius on the 6K exports. But even when pushing that hard, thermal throttling wasn't an issue as you can see by the results. And thanks to the design on the bottom panel, the heat dispersion was handled really well. That said, there were some inconsistencies. On some exports, temps stayed cool and noise was minimal. On others, same export, same settings, it would run hotter and louder. I tested across silent mode, bounce mode, extreme mode, unplugged from the charger, and saw this variance in each of the scenarios when I ran these tests multiple times. So while overall cooling is solid, perhaps there is something MSI could resolve in some firmware updates. For a machine this size and power, battery life is actually kind of respectable. So we saw about five, hours and 15 minutes to five hours and 42 minutes of like web browsing and productivity, two hours and 15 minutes of Photoshop use, and then about an hour and 37 minutes of Premiere Pro playback. Um, with a 99 watt hour battery and an 18 inch 4K mini LED panel, I was expecting much worse, uh, but you can actually get some real work done unplugged from the charger and on the go. Just, you might wanna bring the charger along with you. Now let's run through some benchmarks. Geekbench, single core and multi-core, top of the charts. Cinebench, sitting around the middle to the top of the charts. It wasn't blowing my mind, but life is not made up of simulated benchmarks as I always like to say. Let's look at the real world test. Fugit Systems scored a 9,126, which is more than enough score to indicate that this thing will perform well, especially with 64 gigs of RAM. However, this is kind of a weird time that I'm existing in because though these things show so much raw performance, in say export or 3D modeling, which I'll show you in just a second. But the Puget Systems test just isn't performing for these new Intel Core Ultra chips. It's really surprising me because this is across the board. I, just, I tested the Strix Scar, I tested the HP Omen, I've tested now the Strix G18, and they're all like at this high 8,000, low 9,000, where devices should be moving up into the tens and 11,000s, especially with this much performance. And so it kind of creates a confusion on what the laptop is capable of, which is why I started throwing in that new AI denoise test, because that gives you a very clear example of like how snappy a laptop is now, fast it is at executing a singular task. Now, a big issue I have uh, with some of these gaming laptops that I've tested this year is I'm seeing a dip in performance when you go from uh, on charger plugged in to battery power. So for the MSI Titan 18, you're seeing 9,126 on the charger, but then only 4,994 on battery power. It almost cuts in half. Um, so that's where I'm like, man, what are they, what can we do um, from a tech stack to get this on battery performance up to or equal to uh, the charger performance? 
Moving forward, taking a look at 3D modeling, the results are bonkers. Very, very good performance for Autodesk 3ds Max, Autodesk Maya, and PTC Creo. Plenty of performance that you'll need for those devices. Now, let's talk about the weight and thickness of this device. Oop, I'm kidding, it's not that heavy. It is a heavy device. But again, this is, to me, a desktop replacement. And so when you think about, that's not super thick, nor super heavy. My desktop over there was like 30 plus pounds, I think. And so this is amazing that this is going to replace, replace my desktop system. Should you buy the MSI Titan 18 HX AI? If you're a video editor, this is the fastest laptop I've tested in 2025. And it's also surprisingly nimble for how massive it is. Plus it's on par for Photoshop users and 3D modeling programs. In addition, it's one of the most upgradable laptops I've ever had in my studio with four M.2 slots, with one of them being Gen 5, and of course you have your RAM upgrades. On top of that, the Thunderbolt 5 connectivity makes it a clear winner for me, as this is going to become my desktop replacement. Battery life is good, fan noise is suitable, and the display is phenomenal. However, it's not cheap, but it's worth every penny for the professional who needs this type of performance. Remember, links are in the description below if you wanna make a purchase or click or tap the screen here for more videos to help you with your buying decision. I'll see you in the next one.